It's recording now. Hello. I'm back and I'm going to be reading a paper that I wrote uh, for my composition class. It is a persuasive paper. I'm not pretending that it's a fair and balanced argument at all, but this is my number four paper um, from May 5th. And it's titled, The Uncut Truth About Circumcision, America's Mutilated Men. In the past several decades, the vast majority of American infant males have needlessly undergone amputation of one of their body's most sensitive functioning organs. By ignorantly removing a sensitive and functional part of the reproductive system, parents cause their sons to be put at medical risk whether it's the result of a faulty operation or a successful one. And they also reduce the sexual functioning. Why is this happening? Surely parents would never knowingly cause harm to their son's reproductive organs. Male genital mutilation happens largely due to ignorance of the male anatomy and misinformation of the actual effects of circumcision. The myths that surround the common surgery abound. Although when America, American boys first started being widely circumcised, it was to curb masturbation and attempt to cure mental illness. Uh, the main line of thought today in considering circumcision is the health benefits. Denison 7. I'm also going to have all my sources uh, that I use in this paper hopefully posted to the side. Reportedly, circumcision reduces the transference of, of a number of STDs. HPV, HSV, and HIV are all said to be among the reducible infections. However, upon closer examination, the revolutionary studies of HIV transmission are not only slight in reported reduction, but also were never comprehensive enough to be reliable, reproducible, and valid. Fontreloy, 43-50. Not only is this information unconfirmed with minimal benefits, it also gives a false sense of confidence and invincibility, leading, possibly leading to more unsafe sex being practiced. Other studies have equally, if not better proven, that the Langerhans cells in foreskins actually provide a barrier against HIV-1. More recent studies show that circumcised men are actually at a higher risk for contracting many STDs including urethritis, urethritis, gonorrhea, syphilis, genital warts, and chlamydia. HPV and HIV are of equal risk, and HIV is at least more common, although there's nothing definitely convincing about the transmission risks at this time. Cleese, 364 to 367. Many studies have shown that the foreskin, like all the body's mucosa, such as the lining of the mouth, eyelids, and vagina, are part of immune defense releasing antibodies, antifungals, plasma cells, and other health aids which are the body's first line of defense against disease, carrying them. Either way, this should never and can never replace proper education and protection methods. Infants and children are not sexually active anyways. If there was a statistical STD reduction after this surgery, why not let the boy decide for himself once he's grown? The few health concerns that develop later in life that are treated by this horrific act, such as phlomosis, are usually quite easily treated by other methods. Doctors in the UK have even gone out of their way to emphasize that circumcision is not an appropriate treatment when addressing these kinds of infections. Unfortunately, most U.S. doctors are ignorant of these methods and have little to no experience with foreskins. Another issue people speak of is hygiene because supposedly men are innately dirty. Today, most people in America have access to running water and the very minimal cleaning that a foreskin wants should be no issue at all. Cleaning consists of sliding the foreskin back and forth once under water. The vast majority of men 
should have no issue with the whole five seconds of touching their genitals in the shower. <laughs> What's more is that the intact men, man's genitals function much like a woman's. Vulvas are self-cleaning with natural lubrication. Men also have a cleaning fluid under their protective hood. Yes, just like women, their bodies will have the occasional imbalance where there becomes a hormone imbalance or bacterial infection. It is no more than women do and is easily corrected by similar methods. Some people say that a boy should look like his father as to not cause estrangement. There is no evidence to back this up. Sometime many years ago, an intact father had his son circumcised. Having an amputee as a father is no reason to go chopping out organs or limbs. A last reason that concerns parents is a child's peers and ability to be accepted. Ignorance strikes again. A developed foreskin is actually versatile. A foreskin can be pulled back over the glands and worn with the head exposed, disguised as, an uncut, as a cut man but cut men can never pull their shaft skin over the end and pretend to be whole. As for the preferences of potential mates, if it is a deciding factor, you probably shouldn't be having sex with her anyways. It may be unfamiliar to many U.S. women, but studies indicate that most women prefer intact partners. O'Hara, 79-84 Circumcision has multi-pronged effects. There are many medical effects and risks involved with circumcision besides the removal of the organ itself. Some risks are obvious, others are not. The widely spread story of David Reamer is, com is commonly known and demonstrates one of the more heinous effects. As an infant, David's botched circumcision left his penis mutilated to the point that his parents chose to castrate him and raise him as a girl. Upon reaching puberty and having this crime against nature exposed, he attempted suicide several times. He partially recovered for a time through several reconstructive surgeries and counseling. Unfortunately, he eventually did kill himself, David Reamer. Most men have various degrees of scarring. In some it is almost invisible, in others there are visible scar marks of the instruments used on the shaft throughout the rest of the man's life. On some, there is massive amounts of scar tissue. Because the foreskin is stretched and pulled forward before being cut, it actually often pulls pubic skin onto the shaft. When a boy hits puberty, this will, resu this will result in pubic hair on the shaft. Gallery 1 through 8. To what extent depends how far the foreskin was pulled forward. It's possible for a man to have hair over halfway up the shaft. This interferes, interferes with sexual comfort of future partners. A second effect of pulling the skin forward is that there isn't enough skin to accommodate erections. This means that as the genitals grow during the teenage years, tight, painful erections develop and the delicate skin may even tear. Infant males are born with their foreskin still adhered to the glands, which is not fully developed yet. Most foreskins naturally separate by age 5 and nearly all by puberty. Separating the prepuce before this time damages the head of the penis by tearing the new baby tissues. Of course, there are the regular risks of surgery, failure to heal, reopening of wounds, improper healing, infection, and more are all common. The infants are especially susceptible to infection of the wound because bacteria are easily transmitted to the wound in a soiled diaper. Normally a foreskin helps prevent cross-contamination and serves as a barrier between the medis and excrement. Medis. The many other potential complications besides the actual intended effects are the many other potential complications besides the actual intended effects are seriously too disturbing to list here.